Hello friends, my name is Theo and today this exciting Mr. Media video has been made possible by Skillshare. It's thanks to their generous support that I was able to carve out the time to make this video. So if you like it, be sure to check out the link in the description or stick around till the end of the video and hear some more about them. So as you may or may not know, I've been working my little tail off making a comprehensive editing course for DaVinci Resolve, which goodness, it's it's coming along. It's a huge project, but if you want to be notified about it, go to mesner.media slash training. But anyway, in this process, I've started to really like editing Resolve. And I've been a hardcore Premiere Pro user since before it was cool to be a Premiere Pro user. But Resolve has gotten really good, so I'm going to show you a couple of the reasons why I'm starting to consider pulling the plug on, on that Premiere game. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the obvious stuff like the price or having color and fusion integrated in this really well, or how fast it is, or other stuff like this. This is going to be more of the niche little things you might not be thinking about that really make you know, big quality of life differences. So the first thing that I really like about Resolve over Premiere is its media management. I really like how it's got this little window here in your media pool where you can sort through your bins without having to go up or down or open up a new window. It's of course easy to dive into things just like you normally would. I like this metadata view. I think it's pretty nice. We can of course switch to our list and thumbnail view as well. Another thing I really like is these smart bins. So smart bins, I've got a video on YouTube about, I've also talked about in the course. Sorry, I'm going to be plugging it a lot. We're talking about editing. It's just going to happen. Um, apologies. But this is where you're able to make bins based on tags or metadata or anything else like that. So you've got this measuring close-ups bin, which just takes the close-ups from all of our measuring footage. So here we've got our wides and our close-ups. Here we've got close-ups and we can make, of course, another one for other stuff. So we can just add a smart bin. We can make it for clips that are, you know, all sorts of different specifications, maybe I think with two audio channels or one audio channel or five audio channels. I've only got two audio channels here, but we could also do something like frame rate is 23976 or 30. Of course, we can stack these on top of each other. So here we can all do things that are 2976 but also our Ultra HD, 3840, 2160, or we can do is not 4K. So just like that, you can create really powerful bins, which especially if you're doing like big documentaries or other stuff like that, big projects, this makes managing your media so much easier. And we're able to do this without actually moving our clips around. So we can use these smart bins basically as pointers so we won't have to duplicate any clips. We can just keep things organized however we want. And of course, if you want to have multiple windows, you can always just right click, open as new window, and there we go. Make it as many as your different little guys as you want. So here, it's like this. And of course, you've got this little sidebar that you can collapse or not. So that's why I like media management in Resolve better than Premiere. It's also got cool things like the people detector, but you know we're keeping this a little quick. The next thing I like better about Resolve than Premiere is keyframing in the timeline. So not only for audio, because you see keyframe is going to work basically the same. I'll hold down Alt and click and make a couple of keyframes and move these around. But you see, if we zoom in, this actually updates the waveform as we move it, which I really like a lot. Also for video tracks, though, I just think it's a much nicer interface. So if we animate our zoom, See, we've got access to our keyframes right here in this little window, and we've got access to our keyframe curves. And I see this interface is much nicer than Premiere's interface. In Premiere, it's, it feels tacked on. It's sort of hard to grab things. There's that weird curve editor in the effects control panel that just is not good, just straight up not good. But here, you see we get this nice, nice easy editor we can do all sorts of cool stuff we can even go past things change the whole thing it is just a much nicer interface and of course we can animate something else too position just like this Our x position nice so i think this interface is much better we can of course select whichever thing we want then lastly, something that I really, really have learned to love. This is something that I was resistant to at first because all the demos show it, or all the demos I'd seen shown it using just the mouse, which is cool, but the keyboard shortcuts are where it gets really cool. 
and that is trim editing mode. So here, we can change it to trim edit mode by clicking this button or hitting T on the keyboard. And now we can do, you know, some like ripple edit style things here. You know, this is pretty neat, just context dependent on the mouse. But then we've got this whole suite of keyboard shortcuts. So if I hit V, this selects your nearest edit point. If we zoom in, you see this is selecting the out point of this clip and U cycles these through. So now we're selecting both the in point and the out point. Now just the in point of the next clip. And then we can use period and comma to ripple this around one frame at a time. Hold down shift to do more than that. And you see just how quickly you can tighten up and edit by using keyboard shortcuts like that. So you know, this isn't a trim edit mode tutorial. Well, I'll probably end up making a tutorial about this for my channel here. There's definitely a lot of talk about this in the editing course. So once again, plug, I'm sorry, but I'm working super hard on it. So there it is. I'll stop talking about it one of these days. But there you go. Those are the three little things that people don't really talk about as much that I really like a lot better about Resolve than Premiere. Now I haven't now, full disclosure, I haven't switched over totally yet, but if you're just getting this game, like maybe you start thinking about making Resolve your primary guy. It's got a lot, a lot of stuff going for it. Also, if you're just getting started or you just want to hone your skills or you're sick of waiting for my course to come out, go check out this sponsor, this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses covering an expansive array of topics, anything you might want to know from productivity to art to you know, video editing stuff just like this, all for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. It's a great place to go learn stuff, sit down, not deal with YouTube nonsense, just professional quality courses made by professionals trying to do their best to teach you how to do stuff in the best way possible. Now, I have always personally felt very lacking in my sort of fundamental design skills. I'm good at the very technical things, but the when I see a great logo designer or just some great piece of graphics, I, I get jealous. So I just completed Skillshare's Graphic Design Basics Core Principles for Visual Design, and it feels like just a really great jumping off point for getting deeper in my graphic design knowledge. So if that or any of the other multitude of topics that Skillshare covers sounds interesting to you, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description of this video will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity to your heart's content. And once again, that's completely free, so there's no reason to not do it. So. Go click the link in the description, check it out. It helps you out, helps me out, helps Skillshare out, helps everybody out. So what are you waiting for? Go learn something new today.